Hey everyone, Steph here. So, we have the new 2021 Abarth 505 Competizione. In this video, I'll tell you all the changes Abarth have made to the 2021 Abarth 595 Comp. I will also share my honest thoughts about the 595 platform and what more Abarth can do with it at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around until then. Also, let's see if we can get 1,000 likes on this video. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's get into it and let me tell you all the things you need to know about the 595 Competizione. So what's changed in 2021? So let's start with exterior styling. The 2021 595 Comp is still available in both hatchback forms and in convertible forms. Now the new changes mean that the new Comp comes in two new colours. A Rally Blue, which is a matte colour, inspired by the Fiat 131 Abarth Rally from the 70s, which I really, really like by the way. I think Abarth have nailed it with this colour. I think it looks spectacular and you also get it in the option of a scorpion black as well now additionally to the color changes you also get the new 17 inch wheel alloys now these have been inspired from the 90s Lancia Delta Rally Integrale although personally I don't really see the resemblance and really and truly I'm actually kind of on the fence as to whether I actually like the wheels if I'm honest but I will reserve judgment until I see the car in the metal they, they've also added uh, the 695 wide arch kit, which we're really familiar to seeing in the 695 models, the limited edition ones. Um, and that's an interesting decision to make, and I will touch on that later on in the video. But if you did want the new 2021 ABBA 595 Competizione with the wide arch kit, it will only be available with the rally blue colour and the scorpion black colour as well. And it also only comes on the 595 Comp, uh, it doesn't come on the 595 SASA or Turismo. Now we move to the inside of the 2021 595 Abarth Competizione. Now, one of the big changes is the sport button has been replaced by something called a Scorpion Selector. Now, Abarth in the press release, um, well, when the uh, images were leaked on the German website, turned around and said that, you know, there was a new exhaust system. Um, although it still has the Monza, it is still a valve Monza, which we saw in the previous model comp. I think when they mean a new exhaust system, it means they changed the sport button to the Scorpion Select mode, I think. Now... That might be a little bit of a gimmick, but I do like the way the little Scorpion logo looks on the button. In terms of if you don't know what it actually does, what it does, it increases the torque feel, increases the pedal response, and it tightens up the steering as well. Abarth have also added an Alcantara dash to the 595 Comp, which looks really nice, and it's finally removed that 500 badge on the dash that so many people have qualms with, and it should have been removed years ago. Abarth also say there's a leather seat option, although I've not seen any pictures of it on the Comp, but I have seen the new helmet brown colour luxury interior that you see on the new Turismo, and I'll just overlay a picture of it now. Uh, but also on the Comp, you have the option for a carbon fibre gear stick. Now, the big bit, the thing we all really want to know, what do we get from an engine perspective? In terms of engine, we have the same 1.4 litre turbocharged unit found in every car running 180 horsepower with a five speed manual. Unfortunately, that's really sad. It's really not ideal and I know it's going to upset a lot of people, myself included, from a frustration perspective because I really wanted to see more, but I'll, I'll save my thoughts until the end of the video around, around the platform. In the press release, Abarth also a, a pretty bold to point out that uh, the engine found in the 595 Comp is the same one which is used in the Italian and German Formula 4 cars but to us it's still the same engine and gearbox that we've been used to in that platform for well nearly over 10 years. Now the Competizione and the SASA also come with the mechanical LSD. Now this is also this is a good thing because uh, previously the SASA had the mechanical LSD and the Comp it was an optional extra. Now Abarth in the press release anyway they said that the, the LSD comes standard on the car. Now I don't know if that's going to be a UK based thing or if it will be an option in the UK but from what I've read it says the LSD is a standard optional extra which is good. Uh, but then that begs the question uh, what's really different between the 595 Comp and the SASA then? It looks like the only real difference between both of the cars is, is the Acropovich exhaust. And although Abarth still put the SASA as the flagship car, I think now that the roles have kind of reversed with this refresh, personally, as I don't think the SASA comes with a wide arch kit, well at least not from the photos, um, the only thing we've seen different to the SASA is that there's a titanium Acropovich exhaust tip option, and that's not very revolutionary, and in fact you already had that option on the old Deposto. In terms of the suspension on all the cars um, on the 505 Comp, uh, you still get the Kony FSD, um, FSD suspension setup, and it also comes with Brembo brakes. 
all variants come in the option of a manual or an MTA, which is an automatic box. Now, if we look at the infotainment for all of the 5x5 range, it comes now standard with the Uconnect 7 inch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Abarth also said in the press release that they've also changed the startup sequence screen. So before we used to have the little Abarth car opening and closing from the garage, uh, they've changed that to something different. I don't know exactly what that looks like yet, but they've changed it and they pointed out in the press release. Finally, you also get the Beats audio sound system, which I can say is really good and it sounds really great. And that's a, that's a nice, nice option to come standard in the comp. Now it's time for my honest thoughts on this platform, on the 5x5 platform. Now, Luca Napoli Dano Star has stated that Abarth market share grew by 50% in 2020. And whilst we didn't get the actual numbers, it's great to see growth within the brand, considering that now it only has one model as they stopped making the Abarth 124 Spider, which is a real shame as I own a Spider. And if you want to see more content on the Abarth 124 Spider, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Now, the reason the 595 platform works so well and why people, people keep buying it is regardless of the fact that the engine hasn't changed in years, it's thanks to that beautiful word, PCP. Now, I know people who keep upgrading their cars with the latest editions that come out and the latest deals, and, and they like the fact that it's super cheap to run and super fun to drive, and I echo that. I think it's a great car in terms of all-round usability. Now, as they upgrade their fleet, their cars, what mean, that means is that when the PCP deals are over, all those cars flood the second-hand market, pushing the prices down. And that then allows new people to enter the brand before ultimately they decide to go and buy a new car as well once they you know, got addicted to the fact that Abarth is awesome. And then the process repeats itself. It's very, very similar to the iPhone. You know, whilst the iPhone doesn't necessarily have many huge monumental changes as the years go by, people will still always buy the iPhone because they like it, they like the way to use it, and it's simple. And so this in itself kind of creates its own Abarth ecosystem where Abarth can continue to get customers into refreshed cars. It makes perfect business sense and the brand spend minimal money on research and development whilst cashing in on new cars, which really are a hybrid of reused parts from other models. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and if anything, it makes perfect business sense. And it's almost like Abarth are now modifying their own cars to make them look better, but they do need to start to make a fundamental change to the chassis and the engine, because soon people are gonna start to leave the brand. Just look at what Toyota have done with the GR Yaris and what you get for the money. I mean, look at this latest 595 Competizione. It's a mass market, better version of the 695 70th Anniversario. That, however, it's got painted arches minus the, uh, the spoiler. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually really like the look of this 595 Competizione. And in fact, I now think, in my opinion, this is now the best model in the Abarth range in terms of styling. But this method of squeezing life out of that platform that was born over 10 years ago and really has not had any huge fundamental changes can't last forever. Now, what I believe, and this is very much a Steph opinion, it's not factual, is that with all the focus being put on electrification and the launch of the 500E, which does have a look of a fundamentally changed look, both exterior, interior, and a change in powertrain, we will eventually see that result in move its way down into the 595, I would say next year. That's my own opinion. As mentioned, I also think we'll see an engine change. Um, and maybe even if we're lucky, we'll get a sixth gear. There you go. I mean, that will boost range. It will lower emissions, particularly on a motorway. And the thing is, I love Abarth as a brand, I, and I always will stand by them, but I also have my opinions and my pride myself on being transparent and honest with you guys. If I made this video without addressing the fact that this platform has been milked to death, and we never see proper innovation, I don't think I would be being honest with you. It looks great. It's going to sound great and it's going to drive great because it still has the same engine and powertrain and suspension that we're all used to seeing. But right now I feel it's a, at the end of its tether in terms of what more you can do with it before needing a fundamental change to the engine and chassis. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and now you know everything you need to know about the 2021 Abarth 595 Competizione. I'll probably do a separate quick video or two on the new Turismo and the SASA, so make sure to subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you all very soon on the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.